Session 376 Chapter 3 Verses 40 and 41 قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وقد بلغني الكبر وامرأتي عاقر قال كذلك الله يفعل ما يشاء قال رب اجعل لي آية قال آيتك ألا تكلم الناس ثلاثة أيام إلا رمزا وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحْ بِالْعَشِيِّ وَالْإِبْكَارِ He said, My Lord, how shall I have a son when old age has overtaken me, and my wife is barren? Just so, he said, God does whatever he wills. Chapter 3, verse 40 Let's begin by admiring the nobility and etiquette of prophethood. Zechariah, peace be upon him, was old, but old age is not a reason for the inability to have children. Many men in their eighties and nineties have impregnated women. However, if the woman is infertile, then there is no hope of conceiving. Yet we find that our beloved Zechariah started his supplication politely. He said, My Lord, how shall I have a son when old age has overtaken me? He attributed the weakness to himself first and did not lay blame on his wife's condition alone. We also note that Zachariah said, Old age has overtaken me, rather than the common, I have reached old age. This is because reaching something gives a sense of desire and achievement, but it is usually against your will when something overtakes you. Zechariah was surprised when his prayers for a son were immediately accepted. He wondered, how could this be? Allah narrates this incident to teach us that the human soul is always in a state of flux, not absolute certainty. Allah also teaches us to turn to Him when matters are beyond our abilities. When Zechariah asked his Lord in wonder, the decisive statement, Just so, God does whatever He wills, Clarify that the Creator's absolute ability is above all obstacles. The angels informed Zechariah that God gives you the glad tidings of John, but they did not specify how. Was it through a new marriage to another woman? Was he to return to youth and be able to have better sexual relations? Thus, it was natural for the prophet to inquire further. He asked, My Lord, how shall I have a son when old age has overtaken me and my wife is barren? Because such a matter was supernatural to what was familiar to him. Allah confirmed with just so, meaning that the pregnancy would occur while both Zechariah and his wife were in their current state, old and barren. Allah does not need to return them to young age or bring Zechariah a new healthy woman. God does whatever he wills. The moment the Lord said, Be, the pregnancy began. In the next verse of Al-Imran, our beloved Zechariah asked for more. Lord, he entreated, appoint a sign for me. Your sign, he said, is that you will not be able to speak to people for three days except by gesture. Meanwhile, mention your Lord much and glorify him in the afternoon and the early hours of the morning. Chapter 3, verse 41 Why would Zechariah ask for a sign that a baby was created in his wife's barren womb? Did he doubt God's word? We answer that the prophet did not want to miss a moment of God's blessing. He wanted to feel God's power not only in his wife's womb, but also within himself. He feared that he might not show proper gratitude while waiting for his wife's belly to get bigger. Thus. He asked for a physical sign to start thanking God from the moment the pregnancy began. God's gift fit what Zechariah had asked. Your sign, he said, is that you will not be able to speak to people for three days except by gesture. Meanwhile, mention your Lord much and glorify Him in the afternoon and the early hours of the morning. There is a difference between choosing not to speak and not being able to speak. 
Allah told the Prophet, I will prevent you from speaking, and when you find yourself unable to speak, then know that it is your sign. Now, Zechariah could only communicate with people through hand gestures. But Allah knew that his servant wanted to spend every moment in gratitude. Thus, the only words Zechariah could speak were the words of the Lord's praise. God told him, And mention your Lord much, and glorify him in the afternoon and the early hours of the morning. It was as though the Almighty said, Since you want to experience the blessing while being thankful, I will make you incapable of speaking anything but my praise. The word mention is translated from the Arabic origin thikr, which is the remembrance of Allah, His favors, grandeur, and qualities of perfection. On the other hand, the word glorify is translated from the Arabic tasbih, which exalts God above everything else. Hence, when we say subhan Allah, we declare our Lord's transcendence above all things. Mary pointed out to Zechariah that God provided her with food and provision directly, without means and causes. Now, Mary experienced firsthand how God overruled physical laws and provided Zechariah and his wife with a child. There is great wisdom behind these events, because soon Mary would bear a burden related to her chastity and honor as a woman. Thus, she needed to have the unshakable faith that God provides limitlessly for whomever He will. Now, when Mary bore a child without a father, she was firm in her faith, and Prophet Zechariah stood by her side in support. They both knew that Allah provided Mary with food through His command B, and it was, just as He provided an old Zechariah and his infertile wife with a baby through His command B, and it was. Allah further blessed Zechariah and his wife by naming their son. He says, God gives you the glad tidings of John. Choosing a name is usually done by the parents. In many cultures, parents select a name full of optimism for their newborn in the hopes of giving their son or daughter a good start. For example, they may choose the name Karim, which means generous, in hopes of having a wealthy and kind child but life does not unfold according to our wishes, because humans have no knowledge or control over the future. A girl named Grace may not turn out to be graceful at all. But what happens when the Almighty names a child? The situation is quite different. Allah chose the name John, translated from the Arabic origin Yahya, which means the alive. A poet once said in eulogy of his son, I have named him Yahya so he lives. But I cannot control what fate takes and gives. The poet had named his son Yahya, hoping that he would live a long life. But matters of life and death were not in his hands. His son died as a young boy. But when Allah, the all-capable and the grantor of life, gives the name Yahya, the intention must be a distinguished and eternal life. You and I may think that a long life means living for over a hundred years, but that is our limited human thinking. Our beloved prophet Yahya was killed by his enemies, thus becoming a martyr. God says, Do not think at all of those killed in God's cause as dead. Rather, they are alive. With their Lord, they have their sustenance. Chapter 3, verse 169 Yahya lived on earth. And then when he was martyred, he was instantly transferred to the heavens to live eternally without interruption. That was the blessing of God Almighty naming a child John. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com.